Alright everyone and welcome back to the Highland Collector YouTube channel. Now in one of my recent videos I went over every Black Series pipeline figure we knew of as of July 2023 and even though it's only been a month since that video was released it's already incredibly out of date as since then many of the figures I've talked about have been revealed with some being absolutely incredible whilst others unfortunately fell a little short. In addition to this we also had waves of exciting news regarding the future of the Black Series thanks to reveals at San Diego Comic Con and also the interesting news that many 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 figures could potentially get re-releases and we know of this due to information courtesy of Big Nerdy. And therefore with so much stuff slated to be happening with the Black Series I thought it would be a good idea to go over what we can expect to see revealed in the latter half of 2023. Now do please keep in mind it is likely we may not see all of the figures I'm going to talk about revealed this year. However, with Postcon 2023 right around the corner, I think we'll be in for some surprises, so I'd say we should be anticipating some pretty cool reveals coming soon. Starting with some figures I think everyone is just ecstatic as we're finally making, that being the B2 series Super Battle Droid as well as the Droidica, who were announced as pipeline figures back at San Diego Comic Con. And honestly, it's about goddamn time. For years, we've been begging Hasbro to make more Separatist droids that aren't just repaints of the B1 battle droid. And they finally listened to us. So soon, us collectors will be able to build a formidable Separatist army in the Black Series. Recently, Hasbro has been doing an amazing job with droid figures. So I think these are just going to come out incredible looking and should definitely live up to the hype. But personally, out of the two, I'm more interested to see what the Droidica will look like. I mean, it's without a doubt going to be a deluxe figure, with a pretty hefty price as it is a bigger droid, but I'm mainly wondering how much articulation it will get, as it would be amazing if it could actually transform into the ball mode, so he could roll it about. And furthermore, maybe it could even come with their massive force field, but I do get that would just inflate the price, as it would just be a massive spear of translucent blue plastic. Yet yeah, if done right, it could be a pretty cool addition. Now the B2 Super Battle Droid is probably one of the most requested Black Series figures, and the one we will be getting is the superior design from Attack of the Clones, and not the Clone Wars cartoon. And I'm so happy they're finally making them. Although for those wanting to army build, you may have to wait a while, as this figure will first be released in a 2-pack with a Geonosian Battle Droid with C-3PO's head, which I find really strange, as surely it makes more sense to do a 2-pack of the Battle Droid with C-3PO's head, and then also C-3PO with the Battle Droid's head. Like, I'm not wrong, that makes so much more sense. But anyway, with the crazy demand for this one, it will almost definitely get a solo release at some point. I think Hasbro randomly putting it into a weird 2-pack first is just them trying to milk the hype and sell more at a higher price point. But like I said, hopefully we do see it in the mainline at some point and not as some sort of Walmart exclusive. But speaking of the mainline, we have two pipeline figures from the Phantom Menace coming soon, those being a young Anakin Skywalker, who is yet another overdue figure I'm glad Hasbro are finally making, as well as Padme in her outfit from the third act of the film. These are both two figures I'm really excited for, however I do wish we were getting a more iconic Padme outfit first. Yeah, honestly at this point I'll just take any Padme I can get. Believe it or not, this is our second one in 10 years. And also hopefully that boy Anakin comes with his pod racing gear too. But overall these are two figures I'm really excited to see revealed and like I said before I'm just happy that Jar Jar is finally getting friends in the mural. It's likely these two Phantom Menace figures could be joining the next wave of Black Series Wave 38 alongside Pre Vizsla, Hera and also R2 as there are two slots left to be filled yet there is a code name called Hayden in Wave 39 so honestly I don't know. But in Wave 38 and 39 of the Black Series there are currently six spots that are yet to be filled and if we assume Anakin and Padme fill up two of the spots there are still four figures we don't yet know of. So other mainline figures we could also see revealed are a solo release of Starkiller Vader's Apprentice. It was just revealed in that awesome San Diego Comic Con exclusive free pack and I think it's pretty much confirmed that exact figure will be coming to the mainline but in the gaming greats packaging. And in addition to this we could also see that solo release of the B2 battle droid I mentioned earlier. As for the others, we actually don't have any more information, yet the most possible outcome is that the majority of these code names are for future Ahsoka themed figures, which we will most likely see revealed either at PulseCon or in a fan first live stream in October after the show's first season has officially come to an end. Now there's a shitload of characters from the Ahsoka show we could see as figures, which I'm not going to go over now as I have a whole other video dedicated to that sort of speculation, however I do think it's safe to say a new Ezra is definitely on the way, as the mural art for the new Sabine figure gives us a look at a shoulder that could very well be Ezra's shoulder. Therefore I think we can maybe expect to see him as one of those mystery figures. But that's enough speculation for now, moving on Hasbro are still yet to reveal their newly updated Paz Vizsla from the Mandalorian Season 3, who won't be in the main line because this will most likely be a deluxe figure, but it turns out this one won't just be a re-release of the old figure in a new box, 
but a newly updated figure with better tooling, paint and hopefully some more accessories like the vibro blade. Yeah, I'm still not hyped for this one. I have the old one, that looks cool. In the past four years this will be our fifth Paz Vizsla, and again there are way more characters Hasbro should be making a priority, such as Grief Karga's astromech droid. Yep, this is another pipeline figure that just confuses the hell out of me. I'm all for more astromech droids, especially on that new R2 body, and yes this one looks kind of unique, but again there's way more important astromechs we need first, and even more so we don't don't even have a season 3 grief cargo to go with it. I mean I said it before and I'll say it again, this droid should have come in a 2 pack with season 3 grief, a way this droid would have had a reason to exist in the line, there'd be no risk of another grief cargo peg warming shelves across the globe. But no, this new droid will be exclusive to Walmart, so it will have that exclusive tax which means it will cost an extra £10. So just like its master, it will peg warm like crazy. However, there are more exclusive figures coming out in the form of a Jedi Fallen Order 3 pack exclusive to Amazon, which will include a new Cal Kestis in an Inquisitor uniform, the second sister, as well as another Purge Trooper. Now I'm guessing that Purge Trooper will just be the same one we got in the Gaming Greats line, with the only difference being the accessory, which is rumoured to be an Electro Hammer. That new Inquisitor cow sounds like the only new figure, but I think it's a really interesting choice which I think could look really great, especially if they give us an Imperial BD-1 as well. But it's that second sister that could make or break this 3-pack, as a re-release of the second sister could be cool, as she is a really great figure, which is getting quite expensive on the second-hand market. I just hope this new one comes with some upgrades, such as a cloth cape, as well as a new head sculpt, instead of just the helmet, because these additions I think are sorely needed, but we'll just have to wait and see. Now next up we're going to have to talk about the upcoming Archive Wave, which has a lineup that's quite underwhelming, consisting of characters that no one is in desperate need of. Firstly, we're getting another Bo-Katan from the Mandalorian line, who I don't mind seeing again, although she is a fairly recent release, the figure is actually increasing in price on the second-hand market, and because she is such a prominent character in Star Wars at the moment, I do get her included here, but I can't say the same for this next one which is the Empire Strikes Back Vader. Not a bad figure by any means, but it just feels redundant as we already have so many other Darths out at the moment. And that Snowspeeder Luke also feels like a bit of a weird inclusion due to the fact we've already gotten him in the archive line back in what, 2018 I believe? But the best figure in this wave of 4 has to be the Stormtrooper, which is just the standard one from the Mando line released back in 2020, just because it's not only a near perfect Stormtrooper, also just good to have them available at all times for army building, as it is the quintessential Star Wars Trooper. But even though this archive wave may be disappointing to many, we recently had some massive news from Nerdzoic. He revealed that Hasbro has plans to re-release a shit ton of amazing figures towards the end of 2023 or the beginning of 2024, a lot of which seem to be rather rare figures, which will give new collectors a chance to get some key Black Series releases without having to pay an arm and a leg. But the list of figures include the original Jedi Fallen Order Cal Kestis, Darth Nihilus from Knights of the Old Republic, the gaming greats Django Fett, Dr. Aphra and also Triple Zero, her protocol droid, the Mandalorian Loyalist and the Mandalorian Super Commando, Clone War Season 7 Ahsoka, Commander Fox, Padawan Obi-Wan Kenobi, Plo Koon, the Archive Series Anakin, Maul and Bosk, that really expensive Shadow Squadron set, the Remnant Scout Trooper on the speeder bike with Grogu, these two droid free packs, this one and this one, and the ones I'm personally most excited for being the Clone Commander Obi-Wan Kenobi, as well as that deluxe Emperor Palpatine in his throne, which both go for a ton of money on the second-hand market. Now this is without a doubt incredible news, yet despite claims that some of these figures have already gone back into production, I personally am still a bit sceptical, just due to the whole Captain Rex drama last year, where Hasbro were going to re-release him, and he kept going up for pre-order just to keep getting cancelled, and ultimately he never came out again. So do take this with a grain of salt, and I am trying to tamper my excitement a little bit, but still, it's hard not to get excited by the thought, as we could see some banger figures back on the market. Now, why Hasbro have decided to do this, I don't know. It's probably because they must have lost a fortune during that plastic free packaging period, and so they're just trying to make back as much money as possible in the most cost efficient way. In this case, I just don't care about the reasoning, I'm just happy they're listening to the fans and re releasing so many cool figures. And although, yes, it would be the dream if they actually retooled and updated these figures, I'm just happy we might be getting some of these back in circulation, which is a really positive thing not only for the community but the Black Series line as a whole. So that just about does it for this video. As they're all the current pipeline figures and re-releases we should expect to see revealed sometime in 2023. So as always, let me know down below in the comments what figures you're looking forward to. And as always, thanks for watching. See ya.